The season of Lent comes every year, and it's always an adventure for Catholics. But of course, the roots go back deep into sacred scripture. And I think it's helpful for us to begin our Lenten journey by reflecting upon all of these biblical precedents. You go all the way back to Genesis in chapter 7, verse 12, you realize that the testing of Noah and his household aboard the ark took 40 days of hard rain. As you fast forward, you recognize that Moses also fasted for 40 days of preparation in Exodus 24. Likewise, in the book of Numbers, uh, the 12 spies were sent into the promised land for 40 days to spy out the land and to come back. And it really was another test of faith. If you fast forward to 1 Samuel 17, you see yet another time of testing for Israel, and that was the 40 days when Goliath, the giant Philistine, was taunting Israel until David stepped forward to prove God's power. Likewise, you see Elijah in 1 Kings 19, who for 40 days fasted after having received that sacred meal and traveled all the way back to Horeb, to Mount Sinai, to hear God speak, but not in the thunder or in the earthquake, but in the still small voice. And as you continue on in Jonah chapter 3, you realize that Jonah's message was, again, a 40-day period of testing, of repentance for Nineveh. And that's exactly what the Ninevites did, much to Jonah's surprise. They fasted and they prayed and they repented and God sent blessing and spared them. All of this, of course, sets us up for what we read in Matthew 4. And that is Jesus, after having been baptized, goes forth into the wilderness, led by the Spirit. Mark says he was hurled by the Spirit out into the desert, where he underwent the same sort of temptation or trial that Moses and Israel went through. Of course, he passes the test that Israel had failed, and we know why, because he quoted the Bible. But I think what we need to notice is that all three temptations we read in Matthew 4, Jesus goes straight back to Deuteronomy, chapters 6 through 8, which is precisely where Moses had corrected the foolish and disobedient Israelites for having failed the test. Because man doesn't live by bread alone, not even the miraculous manna, as it were. You live by every word that proceeds in the mouth of God. And the 40 days are designed to kind of help you to hear the word of God. It's a time of, of listening. At the same time, Jesus quotes the fact that you are to worship the Lord and him alone, not that golden calf you made during the 40 days while I was on top of Sinai. So this 40-day period is also a time where we really refine our own uh, our own love, and that is focus our hearts upon the worship of God so that we wrap our lives, our entire lives, around what God's plan is for us. And finally, Moses says, you should not put the Lord your God to the test, especially while he's testing you. It's so easy to find that, you know, 40 days of Lent is a time where our appetites and our passions rear back, you know, and show us how weak we are. The spirit is willing, but oh, is the flesh weak, you know. And so Jesus passes these tests with flying colors, but again, not so that we don't have to, but so that we finally can in a way that surpasses anything that we read about in the Old Testament. So already by the fourth century, when we have the very first ecumenical council, the Council of Nicaea in 325, one of the canons, one of the rules that is promulgated there is the 40 days of fasting for Lent. Now, for the monastic communities, this is a strict fast. It would be excruciating for us to try to emulate that. But for the ordinary Christian communities, and especially for the catechumens who are preparing for baptism at the Easter Vigil, this was a time of serious prayer, of real fasting, but also of sacrifice in general. And this is not something that is introduced in 325 AD as a novelty. It's just by way of reminder. It's a norm that was already a custom, but now it really has become a rule. By the fifth century, when we read St. John Cassian, you know, he is instructing the monks and all Christians about, about Moses and Elijah and Jesus and the 40 days of fasting and preparation and all of that. But he has a special take on the matter. He, he refers to Lent and the 40 days as sort of being a tithe of the year. Because roughly speaking, you know, with how many days there are in a year and the Sundays and all of that, we're, we're, we're giving to the Lord a tithe, as it were. Regardless of how we look at it in terms of theology or scripture and history, the fact is, the 40 days of Lent is a time where we can look inside of ourselves. We're undergoing a test, not the kind of test that I give to my students, a midterm and a final, because as a professor, I need to find out whether they've learned these lessons or not. As a matter of fact, God doesn't test us to find out whether we've learned his lessons or not, because he knows everything. But he tests us so that we might find out what we don't know. 
And so I think Lent is a perfect time of testing where we discover just how weak we are and how much we need his strength. And when you go back and you realize, okay, Noah underwent 40 days of testing. So does Moses. So do the 12 spies. So does Israel under Goliath. So did you know, Elijah and Jonah and all of the rest. The real point is not just to undergo the testing. It's to feel our weakness, but to prepare ourselves for the revelation of God's strength, for the strength of his mercy, for the revelation of his love. Not just the giving of the law at Mount Sinai, but the revelation of Christ's new law as he gives it to us on the Sermon on the Mount, you know, in the Sermon on the Mount right after his 40 days of temptation. God has a word for us. God has special mercy for us, and it is the medicine that we really need. It meets our deepest needs, but so often it isn't until we take, a, we take time aside. We put aside about 40 days, and then we begin to realize you know, how our solutions are superficial. God's solution, that's real serious, you know? And the medicine of his mercy is precisely what he wants to deliver to us, but not until we recognize how much we need it. You have not, James says, because you ask not. Well, when you fast and when you pray, when you sacrifice, you begin to realize just how weak we are and how much we need God's strength. So this Lent, I would suggest that we consider, you know, not just giving up desserts or chocolate, not just giving up Facebook or, you know, some other sacrifice, but giving God a certain amount of time each day for real prayer, for real prayerful listening. Uh, maybe five or 10 minutes of reading scripture. If you've already been doing that, maybe 15 minutes. I would also suggest reading through the catechism as part of our own personal spiritual reading as well. In any case, we ought to prepare ourselves for the revelation of mercy that comes to us with the Paschal mystery. By the time we get to Holy Week, which has been dramatically transformed by the church these last 60 or 70 years, I don't know if people even appreciate the fact that Pope Pius XII, back in the early 50s, basically restored all of Holy Week, you know, beginning with Palm Sunday, then moving on to Holy Thursday and Good Friday and the Easter Vigil on Holy Saturday, leading up to the great celebration of the resurrection on, on Easter Sunday. I mean, this has really become the, the, the Mount Everest of the, of the range of all of the feasts that give us the liturgical year. And I think the more we, the more we put ourselves out, the more we're going to get back the grace and the mercy that we need, not just individually, but our marriages and our families and our parishes as well. I think this Lent is going to be a surprise for many people because they're going to they're going to discover that a little obedience goes a long way to preparing us to be open to and receptive of God's greatest graces.